Let's quickly go over what we will cover in this exploration of the digital age and the social change it provokes. This content is offered in two ways. One, it is an official university course at the University of California, the world's most comprehensive research university, as they call it, the public Ivy League. And uh, it is there in UC Online. So official university students at all 10 campuses of the University of California can take it. And it is offered as an open online specialization where it, the content is presented a little differently, but it's essentially the same content. So at the University of California, we have 10 campuses. It started uh, out with UC Berkeley and UCSF, basically our medical campus. UC Davis, that's where I'm stationed. But we have students from everywhere, also often a lot of students from uh, Santa Barbara, UCLA, Santa Cruz, San Diego, um, Irvine, Riverside, and, and, and also Merced, which is our newest campus. I personally have collaborated with colleagues from all 10 campuses. It's a fantastic playground, the University of California, I have to say. And um, we, we welcome all the students in, in UC Online. So online, the University of California becomes one university again, which it basically is. So we are working there, uh, coming together, and, and it's offered here. At the same time, together with strategic partnership and continuing in professional education, we are offering the content in a, well, a slightly different version as an online specialization. There, we cut it into four courses. So it's a little bit confusing sometimes. So this entire thing is one university course it, at the University of California, or it's four open online courses, which is then one specialization. I'll try to avoid that. But the content is still in these four blocks in, in either way. The first is digital thinking. We already started with that in the current session, and we will keep on going with that a little bit more in order to see like how can we think about our digital reality, what's involved there, and how, we, how do we need to adapt our thinking for business, for government, for NGOs, for research as well in the digital and our social reality. The second one, I really want to start straight away with the trends. Like where are we going? There is, of course, generative artificial intelligence. There is the metaverse, which is more the communication in three dimensions. The blockchain, which is a new decentralized way of storing information. Extremely interesting high potential for property rights system for the digital age. And we will actually start the exploration in something that brings a lot of trends together, which is persuasive technology and social media, which also allows us almost a quarter of a century into the digital age, we start to see the downsides. Every technology, every technological revolution has downsides because it is not technologically deterministic. It's just a tool that you can use for the good. And if you don't pay attention and nobody wants to do evil things here, well, it might turn out that it does things that are not. So like in social media, we have from misinformation, anxiety, anger, fear, addiction, a lot of downsides that we need to explore as well. So this is also an important trend that in, in some technological revolution, it takes us hundreds, hundreds of years for example, you know, with the introduction of the car, it took us a long time to understand what might be maybe be warming up the planet, right? So what? So and here we already, after a quarter century, we understand that these technology are extensions of the mind, and therefore we have to see, like, okay, who is who is actually? How does that? Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. So that we will also explore the the, the downsides and the news and the latest in the second uh, section. Then we have in the second half of this content, digital innovation. Here we really go into and you will start to build your own digital processes, which you then can use in your own, well, research, in your own startup if you want, in your, in your company, in governments. And we can see how we can innovate in the digital age. That is more hands-on and we can, we will explore that you will explore yourself. And in the fourth one, we will go into this, well, last part, of the cube where we have our digital strategies. How can we basically manage change? And that we will do in different parts. We will first understand how technology evolves. Then we will say, see how society evolves. And spoiler alert, there are many similarities. That's why they basically co-evolve together. So social change is socially constructed through 
digital technology. And that brings then everything together in order to become a digital strategist. So that's that's the entire that's the entire course overview at the University of California. This is sectioned a little bit. Uh, these four parts sectioned in different sessions. We have ten week quarters also in UC online as it's offered. So we have week one and two. That's basically the open online course one week or session three and four. That's the digital trends. Then week or session five, six, and seven, and sessions eight, nine, and 10. There are also some other exercises, some are formal exams and stuff like that. And then, but the content here that we cover, the essential ideas, the basic, the frameworks, the trends, where are we going, how we are innovating, and then the digital strategies, how can we navigate that, socially construct our digital reality. That's, that stays the same. All right, so in our first session, which is here session one, first half of course one, we already, we already did that. And what we will then, what's still remaining is, we will dive a little bit deeper into how can we think about, about the digital age, the digital building blocks, which is very important. We often still think in industrial, in industrial age patterns. And what will I show you there is that we will go more around this three-dimensional framework and basically focus on the essentials, the technologies, and their social applications in society. And I will show you that, well, if you turn that around, actually where I got it from, this framework, these are, is linked to really standard models that are used in the industry, that are used in government. So when I work in the industry and governments, that's what you find. This is from 1995. This is like so last millennia from the International Society of Automation. Get that. Back then, they already worked on, on automation. And you basically see that. This is how companies are constructed. You have the hardware at the bottom. Then you basically have the software, whatever they call it, SCADA or HMI. And then you have the higher level softwares, the management, the ERP, and so forth, where you basically then merge it together with the human. And these are not only companies you know, like tech companies, you don't have to work in Silicon Valley. This can be also a very traditional industrial company that it has now a process of digital transformation, or it can be an NGO. I mean, and the hardware might be a tablet where you collect surveys, but it's very important to understand this, this structure and how it works. Now, of course, you will look at some of the best practices, the, the most valuable companies in the history of humankind, and, and how they exploited, how they got, how they overtook, how they leapfrogged all the other very valuable companies or entities on planet Earth as well, created by far the richest individuals in the history. I mean, it's really crazy what, what this paradigm produced in the world, such as Amazon, overtook all the retailers, put them all in their pockets, took them quite some time. But how did they do it? We already started to explore that a little bit. So it basically has consumers and consumer habits, and it has products, and it has logistics, delivery, and it then collects information about it. So that's the digitalization part of it. And actually, it, it doesn't really own, not necessarily even the product. It started as a bookstore that doesn't own or write the books, but it owns a digital copy of it, a digital twin, a digital copy of you, of the consumer, of, you, of your consumer habits. It has a digital twin. That's a technical term. And it also not necessarily owns the delivery service, but it owns a digital copy of it. And basically, that's what this company is. It, it works up here in the knowledge realm. So this information is gathered. Imagine it as a different platform. And that's actually where these companies live. And there it does the machine learning, artificial intelligence, and it does the simulations. And we will explore that. And many other companies work like this. And this here is actually the realm where the revolution happens right now. And they not necessarily have to be the same companies up here and down here. Could be. That there are many examples where we will see where basically the, the, the aggregate value, the additional value that is created by the digital paradigm, consistent information, communication, and knowledge, still creates value to write a book and create a product and, and sell it. But the knowledge about how this is done, that is the additional value, the aggregate, the aggregate value. What we will dive in into still this current is part of the exploration is what's going on up here, especially artificial intelligence, which comes down to machine learning, which comes down to deep learning, and we will go further into that. And how, so upwards, that's 
I call it digitalization. <laughs> and downwards, it's called algorithmification. So we create these algorithms, this knowledge up here, these recipes, and we'd have to explore that. What is artificial intelligence? What are algorithms? Algorithms are basically recipes. And you will see that the world is full of algorithms. And we make this paradigm makes a science out of it. That is what the paradigm is. It's the automation of knowledge creation. Now that hits the homo sapiens a little bit in their pride because supposedly we are the, the sapiens, the, the knowledgeable, the sapiens sapiens actually, aren't we the one that knows that knows, but then we, now we automate it. Anyways, we have a lot of talk about artificial intelligence already in this first, and that would be the first part of the exploration. The first two weeks in UC Online, the first course in the open online specialization.